So here I am looking at a tablet. Imagine that. And I don't look at a lot of them nowadays because really there's just hardly any out there and especially Windows 10 tablets that are more budget orientated. So yes, the prices have been going up. Uh, there's really only two major brands that are dominating now, at least at a Shenzhen. There's a few others that I used to look at before, but they've just been releasing a lot of real lemons. So it's not even worth me risking it really with me, spending that money, dedicating a week or even more testing it to find out what I probably already knew to start with, that it's a lemon. So I've been, yes, I'm being more selective and at least finally we've got a Windows 10 2-in-1 tablet here. So this is called the TechLast X4. It's 11.6 inch IPS panel that's fully laminated and I do happen to have the keyboard here with it. Now stylus support, I believe it supports a stylus but I don't have it so I'm not actually 100% sure wool. I've got about 20 styluses in a drawer right there so I will try all of those ones I've got there and hopefully one of them is at least going to uh, work on this. So this has the eight gigabytes of RAM people want. Sauron N4100. So the cheapest I saw this particular tablet selling for was 329 US and that was on Banggood. It's also selling on AliExpress, Gearbest and other online retailers. Now this is the keyboard that you can get for it, which I highly recommend because it's a two in one. You really do need to get this. I don't believe it is backlit, but I will be checking that. Now this is a authentic unboxing because I have not seen any of this yet. Okay, so I've got a hard plastic case. Well, it's like a soft matte finish uh, synthetic that they've used on it. The colors are very different. In fact, I do actually like it. It's like a, almost a dark purple that they've gone for here. All right, and the keyboard. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. Good spacing. The keys, they have a, a matte finish to them, almost like a rubberized paint job they put over the top of them. And no, that does not look like it's going to be backlit at all to me. In fact, I can't see any backlighting setting there. I don't think it, no, definitely it's painted on those keys. So the palm rest, that's made out of plastic. The thickness of it, as you can see, doesn't seem to be too bad. Rubber feet here to keep it away, hopefully from scratching up the screen protector, which often happens. And a very small touchpad. I hope it's running Windows Precision Drivers at least. So this feels rather heavy. And we have a typical tech last build to it. So you can see on the back here, this is an alloy. It is in a dark gray color. We've got a five megapixel camera kickstand. Now, do we have? Yes, we do. This is what I wanted to know for sure. Sorry, my autofocus is going all over the place right here. Just left it on for the unboxing part. Uh, SSD slot, so expandable. So two screws there, we can remove this. And that would be to me, it looks like a 24, 2 by 42 or maybe 22 by 60 I'm going to check it out a 5 pogo port pin connector at the bottom of course for our keyboard and here on the right hand side we have DC in it got the uh, micro HDMI out which is HDMI 2.0 spec USB 3 port and type C in charging data and video apparently which is good so they haven't skimped on ports at all for a tablet and we do have a micro SD card reader at the top. I prefer that location than underneath the kickstand. We've got a power button right here and plastic. It feels like it is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe metal. No, it feels like it's plastic. They have a good feel to them and doesn't have any real rattle there. 3.5 millimeter headphone socket with headphone jack with microphone support and another USB 3 port, so that is good. We've got vents all around the top here. Now that's just to let hot air out, but this does not have any active, sorry, yes, active cooling. It's all passively cooled right there. And the hinge doesn't feel too bad at all. And yeah, I'm really digging the fact that they've put this in here, that expandable slot. Magnets should just click it in, which it did. It brought that up there quite nicely. So you can see with our kickstand, it goes back it's stiff enough that it's going to hold the weight of the tablet. Now, I'm going to measure this, of course. I always do with my unboxing. I'll give you just the weight of this overall carry weight. And it goes right down about uh, that far right there, which is actually quite good. Not too bad. That lifts the keyboard up a little bit. So we do have the second setting here. So very similar to the Surface line. So you can see magnets now, they're going to hold it in that higher position. Now, a lot of the time I found that the magnets weren't strong enough when you were actually typing on this that it would drop down. And that seems to be okay. So I'm applying, applying a bit of pressure right now to just get a little bit of flex, but overall that keyboard seems quite good. So the build quality 
for me overall is actually quite good. Not bad at uh, all, considering this is about 329. So you'd kind of expect that now with the higher pricing from what they used to be a couple of years ago. And we do have these tiny little front firing speakers. So for that size and knowing the history of Tech Last, I'm not holding my breath that these will actually sound decent, but I will give you a sample of them in the video. But let's just check the overall weight now of the tablet and keyboard. So 872 grams for the tablet itself isn't bad considering it's all made out of an alloy. And as mentioned, the build quality is quite good too. It feels very solid. Now with the keyboard, of course, that's gonna bring it up to 1.18 kilos. Okay, so I just ripped off the screen protector and I have powered it on as you can see. So it's gonna take a while to first boot up. Here we go, so we have to go through the Windows setup that, uh, oh, looks to be in Chinese. Now notice, because it's a fully laminated panel and IPS, you normally get this. Even on the Microsoft surfaces, I've seen it and I've seen it really bad. So we've got some uh, light leakage around here, a little bit of bleed around the corners. This is due to the lamination process with the glass digitizer and pressing up against it. Okay, good, we've got lots of languages here. So it wasn't just Chinese, that actually worried me for a second. So we have English, German, Spanish, French, Italian, uh, no doubt there's gonna be okay, Korean, Russian, Portuguese there as well. So I went through that typical Windows setup and it didn't take too long to get me in and up and running here. Now it is using a complete valid, legitimate Windows 10 license. Now the touch accuracy of the screen seems good. Initial impressions of the screen, that the brightness is borderline, it's enough. It's 250 lux, almost 250 lux. So being fully laminated indoors is gonna be perfectly fine. But if you use this outdoors in direct sunlight, no. Okay, that's not gonna be great. For an IPS panel, I can see a typical trait here that it is definitely leaning towards a blue tint with the white balance. Now you can see all these styluses around. So I've just tested seven different active styluses that I have. I have another couple that I think are at home. Nothing's working so far. I thought it might have been the batteries. So I went out and bought a couple of new quadruple A batteries and nothing's working so far. But Windows is reporting, as you can see right here, that it does support a stylus, this tablet. It's just, I don't know which one it is from TechLast and I couldn't buy it at the time of picking up the X4 here. So just a few things here to report that I like to always check on when I first go over these particular tablets. And that is the free space we get because we've only got that 128 gigabytes of storage, but it's so great that we have that expandable slot. I will show it to you in this video too, but it's a 2242 tech class branded one that's in here. So I don't expect it to have incredible write speeds. It will be about 500 reads and probably about half that in terms of write. They tend to be the smaller cards. So there is one surprise here that I was not expecting. So normally when we take a look at our wireless chip in here, they go with Intel's dual band AC V3165 almost 90% of the time. But here we have the wireless AC 9461. So this is new, it's the first time I've actually seen that. Now to comment quickly on the touchpad and the keyboard. So I've just briefly been typing on it. This is all just first impressions, this video, but there's no issue with the keyboard. There's no missed keystrokes at all with the space bar. Every single key on here seems to be working fine, which is good. And as I showed you in the beginning, there's just a tiny little bit of flex when pressing down, but overall the base of this type cover is very firm, which is great. Now the keys themselves, the shortcut for the brightness, the audio disabling the touchpad, that is a direct control. So I like this setup. So you don't have to hit function first in order to, to just lower or increase the brightness. Now the touchpad is controlled by Windows Precision drivers, which is great. So I've noticed that it does seem to be especially a lot better than when you get those generic ones you used to have before. At least you've got a bit of control over it now. And now it is a little bit overly sensitive. Now I can see why they've probably increased the sensitivity. Being so small, they want just one motion to go from one side of the desktop to the other and just make that a little bit easier there. And as for memory, so to confirm that we have, of course, eight gigabytes. And the good news is it's running in dual channel. I have confirmed this as well with HW Info. So I have some good news here in regards to that SSD slot. So as you can see, it's going to be able to take a larger 2280 sized SATA 3 M.2 SSD. And also this one right here, which is the 22 by 16 millimeter size. 
one more positive to the list. We have a completely unlocked bias, and that also includes our power limits. So if you didn't want to go with the default setting they've gone with, then you can simply go into this menu here and change that. You're able to tweak, in fact, everything. A lot of settings that could even get you into a bit of trouble. So those tiny speakers are probably the worst part of this tablet so far that I've encountered. They're not good. They are very weak. They lack in loudness and there's no real bass to them. There's nah, nothing. They're flat, very flat, as you'll hear from my sample now. And a quick benchmark, so this is really on par with all of the others, Sauron N 4100s. I can show you the last one I tested, which was Chewy's Lapbook Pro. So that posted a very similar score, even though this is coming out just marginally higher on the multi-core score there. It could be because of the RAM having double the RAM there, because the Lapbook Pro only has 4 gigabytes of RAM, this has 8. Okay, so I've been hands-on with this uh, for a whole afternoon, and even with just that short amount of time, I can pretty much know everything about this tablet because I've reviewed so many Gemini Lakes. It's really just like the back of my hand. So it does have a very good build to it. I'm not really surprised there because Tech Glass, they have been good as of late with their build, with their laptops, with their tablets, everything is good there. I don't see any issues at all with the, the build of it. I quite like the keyboard. I like the color that it's a little different here, that sort of dark, uh, purple color they've gone with. So we get good travel on those keys. It is firm, so pressing down really hard, you get a tiny little bit of flex there, but this is exactly the same as the type covers that you will find, uh, at least the flex that is, with say the Surface line. Now one thing the Surface line does not have that I believe they should, and it's so handy to have for ease of upgradability of course, is that SSD hatch on the back. That is really cool having this on there. I'm so glad that they're moving over to doing this. And I did not expect to see the larger 2280 size. So remember, it's SATA 3. So whatever you put in there, you can put, I think, up to a terabyte or two terabytes. Just don't go for an NVMe one because that's not going to work. It has to be SATA 3 spec, okay? So the obvious weaknesses here and cons. I mean, the bezels, yeah, they are very large. We saw that straight away. I expected this with an 11.6 inch tablet. They don't have a lot of space. So they really do have to push the width of it out in order to just stretch out the width of that keyboard there. Now the magnets on the keyboard, a lot of them have been quite weak in my experience, but these ones you can see, it's good. It's gonna hold. I mean, I'm not gonna lift it up. In fact, I will test that. Will it drop? No, there we go. So <laughs> it's a little bit risky doing that. And so I didn't expect that to hold it then, but the magnets are working really well on that as well. And then the second level two, it's not dropping down. So that's another pro there with this uh, particular laptop here. So plenty of ports. Webcams seem very weak, they're not great, okay, so the 720p out the front, it's supposed to be 30 frames per second, but it's running at 15, it's a little bit sort of blurred, the quality and pixelated, Ugh, not good, okay, and those speakers, the obvious weakness, the obvious weaknesses that I'm talking about with these tablets that I always encounter that they never seem to improve on, is that right there, so they're not good speakers, okay, so if you happen to be sitting with a group of people and you want them to hear exactly, you might fault a bit of loudness there. Now there is software out there to boost the volume, but the quality is going to remain the same. Dead flat, no bass, you know, they're, they're not, not good at all. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so I quickly plugged in uh, one of my headsets I've got, and it sounds fine, so the typical Gemini Lake, that we don't have any of that annoying static that we used to get way back with the bay trails and things like that. That's gone, that's good area. So the battery life is looking like a weak spot as well. So that's a 26.6 uh, watt hour battery that's only going to last you about six, seven hours tops. Whereas the laptops with the 38 watt hour battery that are also running the Gemini Lake, they will get then about eight to nine hours. So much better battery life out of them, but they're not, of course, as portable and small like this particular two-in-one uh, tablet here. So I have encountered a bit of an issue with the USB port here. So the Type-C is working fine. It does support uh, power delivery as well. I plugged it in and it will charge. But the issue with mine here is that sometimes it's a bit flaky. So sometimes it's USB 2 speeds, other times it's USB 3 speeds from this port. This one seems to run at USB 3 speeds. Seems to be powering an external hard drive fine. But this one's cutting out and then it will go into USB 2 spec and then it will access the files and transfer them over from an external hard drive just at that slower USB 2 cap, which is about like 24, 25 uh, megabytes per second instead of being about 100 and something. So that is an annoyance there. That to me is the only and the problem that I have encountered so far. I cannot comment on the stylus, unfortunately, because I don't have it. I couldn't order it at the time of ordering this. 
and all of the styluses I tested, I got like 10 of them, none of them seem to want to work with it, which is a bit unfortunate. It is a Godex touch digitizer they've gone with, touch response seems to be fine, and you would have noticed, if you've got a keen eye, that it is running Windows, uh, sorry, not Windows, Linux, running Linux, uh, and it's not, this is Linux Mint, it's not working touch support, okay? So that's the only thing I found that is not working. Everything else seems to be fine there, so you need to hunt around and find a driver there, which is a little bit of a hassle. So overall, for me, there's no real deal breaker. It's just battery life, speakers, and the USB port. The rest of it does seem really quite good. So I probably release a full review of this, although I think I've just covered everything, really. I only need like a day not even that with these tablets to know the full ins and outs, but uh, I'll probably be back with that full review because then I can give you full battery stats and charge times too as well. And anything else I might encounter with using this particular tablet here for one week. Thanks a lot for watching this review. Please do like if you happen to like the video, of course, and subscribe for more up and coming tech videos from, from me. Bye for now.